3 p.m. I'm Lisa Herbold, President Pro Tem of the City Council. Will the clerk please call the roll? Juarez? Here. Lewis? Here. Morales? Here. Peterson? Here. Sawant? Here. Strauss? Present. Council President Pro Tem Herbold? Here. Seven present. Thank you. Uh, presentations? There are no presentations. Uh, we'll move on to in your way. <laughs> Thank you, Council President Chotem Herbold. I move to amend the proposed introduction and referral calendar by introducing resolution 31926 entitled, quote, a resolution of reaffirming Seattle as a welcoming city expressing the Seattle City Council's solidarity with Seattle's South Asian community regardless of religion and caste and opposing India's National Register of Citizens and Citizenship Amendment Act by referring it to the City Council for consideration on January 21st, 2020. Thank you. Uh, for the record, I want to recognize that we did receive a second uh, for the um, uh, motion to amend the introduction referral calendar. Are there any comments? Uh, um, if I might just Absolutely. describe what it is. This is a resolution in opposition to the horrendous Citizenship Amendment Act and the National Register of Citizens in India. These are policies of the far-right Modi government in India and are expected to, if they're carried out through their full logic, strip 200 million Muslim people of their Indian citizenship in addition to others in the country. India's Prime Minister Modi has a long track record of promoting violence and discrimination towards Muslim people and people of the lower castes. His policies use xenophobia to drive right-wing demagoguery, much like Donald Trump does, and they have even held a joint rally in Texas, Trump and Modi have. Seattle's South Asian community has requested that the city speak out on this issue because it is the duty of ordinary people to oppose the dangerous right, rise of the far right everywhere in the world and believes that the rapidly expanding authoritarianism of the Modi government in nuclear-armed India is of concern not only to the millions of Muslims, oppressed castes, women, LGBTQ and LGBT people in India who are under threat, but also to Seattle's South Asian immigrant community and all those opposed to Trump and the right wing in the United States. We're introducing this resolution today. I've emailed a copy of that to all your offices so that it is available online also for the public to see, and we will move it for a vote at next week's council meeting, which is on Tuesday, January 21st, instead of the usual Monday because of the MLK holiday on Monday. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing a seconder is Prashant Nima. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Javed Sikander. I'm a member of a group of uh, folks who work for peace and democracy and secularism in India uh, here in Seattle area. I live in Redmond. I've been here for 20 plus years. Uh, so I'm here to support the resolution that uh, our council member Shema Savan just introduced, uh, which is reaffirming Seattle as a welcoming city and expressing the Seattle City Council's solidarity with Seattle's South Asian community, regardless of religion and caste, and opposing India's National Register of Citizens and Citizenship Amendment Act. So as a resident of Seattle, uh, a city that is seen around the world as a place for all communities, people of all religion and values living peacefully and harmony, I strongly support this resolution. Um, and... Um, uh, to, to voice our deep concerns on the rising hate and fascism in India, which is reflected in this uh, Citizenship Registry Act, which essentially um, is designed to strip the citizenship of 250 million people. If you understand the size of that, that would be the fifth largest country if they were to live in a separate country by itself. So that's the number of people who are at risk of losing their uh, rights to vote, for example, uh, or rights to make their um, say, uh, have their say in the democratic process of India. So, and also uh, in a country where maintaining birth records is just impossible. So to prove your citizenship, you have to get your father's birth certificate, you know, from 70 years back. Um, more than half the people don't have any physical you know, records of citizenship in India. So it's, it's essentially a law that will marginalize a long, large number of people. 
Uh, I'm here to strongly support the resolution that is being proposed. Thank you very much. Following Prashant Nima is Hassan Khan. Um, thank you, Council Member, for allowing me to speak here. Um, my name is Prashant. Um, I have been in Seattle area since 2001. Um, I am here to support the resolution that Council Member Shama Savant has introduced. Um, my biggest issue with the National Registry of Citizens that is being introduced by India is that it assumes that everyone is guilty by default unless until they prove it otherwise. Um, this is, and then the law uh, will proceed to treat them worse than convicted criminals. They will be sent to detention centers where there is no uh, human right uh, practices that are yet defined. Um, and it will include children, women, and seniors. Um, for, a, for, a, for a normal person, when I tell them this, they, they uh, are horrified and they equate it with Germany's Nuremberg Law because uh, the, as, as Javed uh, explained, that it also curtails people's right to vote. Uh, because uh, the government officials can arbitrarily define if you are a citizen or not. This actually uh, hurts the marginalized, marginalized communities who have no access to legal documents uh, disproportionately. Uh, also, LGBTQ and uh, women who have been not uh, given family property rights uh, and also they don't have access to the same document. So uh, it's going to impact millions of lives uh, on our watch. So I uh, propose that we should uh, adopt this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Following Hassan Khan, it, we have Ibrahim Mogul. Hello, my name is Hassan Khan. I'm a Washingtonian American Muslim. I'm here to thank Congressman Council Member Shama Salman for her support in, in our protest against this draconian law which will make 200 million Muslims of India as homeless, stateless. And this fascist party is, has a hidden agenda. And I'm a victim of a mob violence by this fascist party in a train in India. So I really, I'm here to thank you and I really appreciate your support. I look forward for your help. Thank you. Following Ibrahim Mogul, we have uh, Raghav Kashuk. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ibrahim Mogul. I'm here in U.S. since last 17 years. Uh, so first of all, thank you, Council Member uh, Shama Sawant for uh, uh, presenting this resolution. Uh, so just to start with, you know, Seattle City is one of the best cities I have, uh, you know, seen so far uh, in, in, in my... Sorry. Uh, basically, it is a symbol of democracy. It welcomes everybody. It is most friendly city. And, and the reason I'm uh, speaking here today is my family, my parents, my siblings are back in India. And, and my, my father was a teacher uh, since like 1960s. And my entire family is teaching from last several decades. And now they are in a fear of going to detention center. So we need to make voice against these kind of laws passed by the Indian fascist government. Especially, uh, this is the first country in the world which will not agree on your citizenship because of your passport. They are doing it on the basis of religion. So it is the worst kind of human crisis we have having in India. And it is violating all the human rights which are defined by the United Nations. So my request to all council members is to approve this resolution uh, uh, as we proceed. And thank you for that. Yes. Uh, my name is Raghav. I'm here in uh, support of the resolution that was just proposed, as well as to oppose the war against uh, Iran. Um, so, you know, I want, just want to say a few things. I think one thing is that you, the Indian Constitution um, is one of the biggest progressive victories of the 20th century, I believe. And what these laws do uh, by the Indian government is they attack it, right? They try to undermine some of the most progressive principles of the Constitution. Um, and that's not just my opinion. There's a mass movement in India which feels the same way. And it's one of the biggest spontaneous movements, um, at least in the last few decades, at least since the emergency in India, if not more than that. And they all are out in the streets protesting these laws for the same reason, right? They want to defend the, the Indian constitution, basically. Um, the next thing is that I think uh, we need all the help that we can. Since the government is not showing any signs of backing down, we need all the help that we can from the international community 
to show solidarity with the, those protests, um, which is why I think you should all vote for this resolution. And, and the, the connection with the war on Iran, I see all these movements as related, right? This, uh, one of the biggest motivations behind the Indian laws is Islamophobia. And that's the same kind of racist and Islamophobic mentality is what is behind uh, the war uh, against Iran. And, of course, there's a bigger issues of capitalism and imperialism which are intimately connected. The right-wing uh, regime in India is, has deep echoes of the right-wing regime here. And I think we see, the, we see, at least I see these battles as one and the same. So I would urge you to oppose war against Iran also. Thank you. Thank you.